Three months ago, I rescued this 2001 Lexus GS from Ohio of all states. We've been through a lot and I've already done a lot, but look at her now. It's been three, now really almost four months with Selena. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about what I've done, what's broken, and then we'll take her out for a spin. So if you don't know me, I'm Burn, and this is Selena, my 2001 Lexus GS430. Now I got this car at the beginning of November of last year, and she was pretty rough. And when I say rescue, it was quite the rescue mission, and I still have a long ways to go. So since we're on the outside of the car, the first thing I wanted to talk about that's happened is kind of my favorite thing and the biggest thing that's happened to this car. I finally found my dream set of wheels. These are from the 04 to 06 LS430, Lexus of course. I actually asked people in the review of this car, the last video I posted, if anyone had leads on these wheels or if anyone wanted to buy the old wheels that I had on this car and if someone wanted to buy the chrome wheels. And all of that happened in less than a week and I'm so thankful for that. And I did eventually want to get summer tires for this. These are eBay tires, they're Forcium, at least that's what I think it's pronounced. Forcium Octas, they're supposedly all seasons but the tread wear, like the tread pattern and everything clearly is a summer tire. But the tire size is 245-45 R18. Eventually, I'd like to maybe do 255 if I can, you know, get a little bit wider of a tire, better handling. But regardless of tire width, I'm very, 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 very impressed with how these tires handle. The only other thing that I want to do that's, you know, involved with wheels, tires, and suspension is lower the car, but just a little bit. I'm tired of people telling me to slam it. I mean, they look cool on other people's cars, but for me, because I drive this every day and where I drive this, it's useless and the car rides like shit. And I don't want a car to drive like that. Oh my God, there's a Nissan Altima. So maybe lowering springs, I don't know, something that's cost effective, but also, you know, visually effective as well. Now there is something unfortunate that has happened. You can't, you honestly can't really tell because I pulled it out. That's what she said. <laughs> but I hit a deer. Well, uh, a deer hit me. I was driving, you know, there's all of these different situations, but a deer hit this front fender and there's a dent that's you could still see but it really hit the bottom side uh, where the door and fender meet so when i'd open the door it would crunch so i got real angry let me show you <laughs> so i was in my garage and i got real angry so i decided okay what if i open the door so this is exactly what i did open the door and then i just you know there's like a lip here and i just pulled all my weight onto it here and then it pulled the den out, so you know, now it's not as bad. I've ranted about the body on this car since I first got it. You could listen to 10 minutes of me ranting in the corner up here. I ranted about it in the review. I ranted about it everywhere. There's that Nissan Altima again. I said I want to repaint the car. At first, I thought, okay, maybe, you know, YouTube money will be plentiful enough that I can take the car to a body shop and then, you know, have them do everything that's that 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 ain't it so i'm going to do it youtube budget style i mean at least my budget style i'm painting this myself if you don't know i painted my tacoma phantom by myself it was kind of a mistake of me to not make a video at least one i mean you know of me doing it but so i'm gonna make a full series on how to paint your own car at home now i'm gonna be using rattle cans i used rattle cans on my tacoma and it actually turned out pretty good and that was the first ever vehicle that i've painted i did mess up the clear coat but i've painted two or three other cars since then. So now I have a better understanding of how clear coat works and what clear coats to use and humidity and everything. The front bumper is absolutely terrible. I mean, I don't know what this guy ran into, like like running over people or something, hedgehogs, things. Cause like, you know, the bumpers like popped out on some places, it's cracked on the other side, it sticks out on the other side. I, I'm gonna start ranting about it again. George is getting upset. 
there's just a lot that needs to be done in terms of body work. So for the color, I'm going to paint this thing in, I don't really know a specific name. I guess the closest is like supersonic red on a new Toyota. It's a really nice deep red, but I think I want to go a little bit darker and then I want to do a bit of a metallic to it as well. So hopefully, no, not hopefully, I know it will look good but hopefully that video series will turn out good and hopefully that video series will make enough money so I can do all the other things to this car, my truck, and then my RAV4. Okay, so now let's get down to her eye level. This is the next topic of discussion. I wanna retrofit my headlights. These headlights, I've tried restoring them, but I don't know what this guy, like, ugh. Just watch this video, you know, for me complaining. But I don't know what happened to these headlights before I got this car, but they're to the point of just no repair. I'd like to go with projectors. These are the factory HIDs. The 01 GS430s had factory HIDs. And the output is great, but I just like a little bit more, you know, just modernize the car a bit. I also want to paint the inner housing black. Uh, so that's this is gonna be after I paint the car red so it'll actually look better because if I just did black on black it would be too much black for me but I want to do the projectors and then I also would like to do the little LED daytime running lights on this and then on this here because these have running lights but because these inner parking lights are LEDs they just don't run on a lower voltage. I love the fog lights and I love how these older Lexuses have yellow fogs from the factory like the ISs. This guy put the switchback LEDs so they turn white or yellow. If you have one of these and you're running yellow fogs let me know what bulbs you're using because I'd just like to stay with yellow because I don't see why I'd need white. And we're gonna do a bit of a spin. Do you like that editing move? I hope it looked good in post or just while you're watching it. But this is my favorite, well, one of the many favorite angles of this car, the side. What I wanted to talk about is I wanna tint my windows. I mean, that's something that everyone wants to do, but I've been dying to tint my windows because I don't know how anyone can tolerate the fishbowl. Why do you like the fishbowl? I don't, like this has tint on it already and it's just clear, clear tint. What the hell's the point of clear tint? Doesn't make any sense to me. I'm starting to rant again. So I've put about 5,000 miles on this car. Let's say 5,500 miles on this car. I'm at 217K right now. And I got this at 213. So I've, you know, been through some time with her. And there's a lot of you, not a lot, but there were a few of you that were upset about me getting this car. First of all, I like this car more than the XC90. Yes, I'm throwing shade. And this has been more reliable and trustworthy than the XC90. So you could suck on my thumb. Suck on my thumb. Yeah, you can suck on my thumb. But this has the 3UZ FE. It's a 4.3 liter V8. It's also the one in the LS430. The older V8 GSs were the 1UZ. Those were a 4 liter V8 that you could find in the SC400 and the LS400 and some Japanese Toyota Aristos and Celsioras, but I could go out and, you know, talk about that for ages. This one makes 300 horsepower and 325 pound-feet of torque. The 4.3 GS430 ran from 01 to 05. The 05s are the more rare ones, but I don't need to nerd about that more than I already am. In the previous videos, I think it was the second to last from, you know, this one, I replaced the knock sensors, the brakes, and a few other things like intake manifold gaskets, and that was a complete saga. That video will be up here as well. But ever since then, she's been running perfectly, like, just beautiful. No signs of, you know, weakness at all. Unlike, I have to be honest, the XC90, I love that experience, but I never trusted that car. Whenever I floored it, whenever I just, you know, drove it erratically or drove it to have fun, I felt like it was going to grenade itself, either the transmission or the engine. Actually, fun fact, for those people that are sucking on my thumb right now, two weeks after I sold that car, the engine blew. And that car never gave me any, you know, like warning signs, like no major malfunctions, nothing. Just out of, the, out of nowhere, the engine blew up. There are 
two things that uh, that have been going on and it's kind of been more of an annoyance than like an actual issue first i don't know what happened i don't know if this is because someone tried to jack the car from the wrong point but since december when i filled the car to the brim with gas it leaks and it didn't do that when i first got that got the car so i don't know what exactly happened the only way to combat that i fill it up to like three quarters which saves me money because gas is freaking expensive right now but i think that's also been triggering an evap code because every once in a while i'll get a check engine light and then it'll go, it'll go away like in a matter of 30 minutes or so you know i'll just shut the car off and go do something and then it just goes away before I could figure out what it is. So I'm assuming it's an evap thing because it leaks a little bit of fuel. In terms of mods, the only things that I still plan on doing, I think the first, well, the only two things I really want to do are a K and an intake for the noise and then a mild exhaust. I don't want to be obnoxiously loud. I don't want drone because I take this car on road trips. It's my daily. I do not want my car to be giving me headaches or my passengers because I'm considerate. Okay, so we're going to take a ride in Selena. I love the sound of that 4.3 starting up. That's my girlfriend, the lady in the car. We're going to give it the beans now. Very smooth, very quiet. We're gonna take this corner here. I just love, like, like, when I drive this car, I'm more quiet. Let's see, no one coming. Quick! I love it. I don't wanna be doing that too much because gas is expensive and now every time I push the throttle all the way down, uh, that just like, you know, kills my MPGs, man. But I really do love this car. The only complaint that I could say I have is that I wish that, I wish that the throttle was a little bit more sensitive or at least in like power mode, I wish that it was more touchy. I mean, it does help me, you know, when I'm driving normally so I don't burn too much gas, but under you know like sporty driving i just wish it was a little bit more sensitive it does ride beautifully and the handle is the handling is beautifully well it handles beautifully there's a slow es 300 in front of me it, it, it's always like that the es 300s slow you know they like they're blocking the gs's and the is's from going quickly a lot of people ask me what i looked at when i was looking at this car honestly i was really cross shop cross shopping this between a manual v6 accord coupe a seventh gen because i used to have a seventh gen and i liked it but i wanted to stick with something that was v8 and i wanted rear wheel drive this time and a lot of people were like why don't you get an e39 and i was like yeah i could but i'm not a bmw guy I'm a Toyota guy. And these second generation GSs have always just been nostalgic to me because a, well, an old friend's dad used to have an 01, I think, GS 300, it was silver. Um, so when I look at those, it's like, oh, you know, back then they were really cool to me. And that was a 300 and I thought it was fast. And the four, I mean, you know, as a little kid, and now that I have a 430, I'm like, wow, you know? And it's kind of the best of both worlds for me. And I honestly think that these second gen GSs, at least in the rest of the car world, are underrated, you know, compared to the E39 uh, 5 Series and also the W. What generation was that? W2 W210 mercedes e-class the w210 the normal ones are very soft and not sporty at all but the e55 w210 that's a really really hot car just like the e39 m5 that might be why these cars aren't as praised as i think they should be because lexus didn't make a gsf back in 2001 they didn't make something that would compete with the m5 or the E55. 
they just made the 430, which just competed with the E420 or E430, and also, why are you slowing down? ES drivers can't drive. Oh my god. But the E420 and also the 540i. And whatever Audi made at the time, too. We're going to do a bit of another traction control. I fucking love how fast this car is! Ah! Especially around corners. That's when the car feels most quick. And it takes corners so well. Like, ah, it drives like a sports sedan. I love it so much. Like this corner, I'm gonna take it, no brakes at all. Ah, it just glides. There is body roll, but the amount that it affects the actual, you know, sporty dynamics of this car is so infinitesimal. Just because it corners so nicely, like, Oh, especially with the summer tires. And it's warmer today, so she's really hooking. That is all that's gone on with my 01 Lexus GS430. Now, I hope that you guys have been enjoying this series because I certainly have been. And I actually plan on keeping Selena for longer than anything, you know, like the other Volvos I've had. Uh, especially... I know I'm committing because I'm gonna repaint this car. I'm not gonna paint a car that I'm gonna sell. I mean, I've done that before. That was Miss Cranberry, a Camry, that I never even posted that video. I'm rambling. So, you know, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Support the channel in any way you can possible because I'm doing this full time. And the more of you that watch, the more I could do things to my cars and you can watch the fun adventures. There's a truck that's passing me. But I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye peeps. I'm gonna do this. This is gonna be behind the scenes. There's mosquitoes. Let me see what these people are doing. You're turning right. Please turn the other way. This is gonna be embarrassing because people are watching. <sighs> Put the key in this pocket. No, it's not. This is gonna be embarrassing because mosquitoes, as I call them, when they bother me when I film, these random people, they're watching. You know what, it's not, because this is my job. You know, this is my job. I'm gonna jump, you know, three, two, three, two, one. Does that look good? Or like, mmm, like, like, you know? Or like, I look like an idiot, but thumbnail. One of those has to be good, yeah? Or, I don't know. One of those has to be good.